You're tuning into a special episode of Drive with NAR, Mike Takeover here in Boston, Massachusetts at NAR Next. I'm James Dwiggins, co-host of Real Estate Insiders Unfiltered Podcast. You know me as Dwiggy Dwiggins, <laughs> along with my uh, partner in crime, Mr. Keith Robinson, crazy uncle. Yes, sir. Brian Green, yeah. Vice President of Policy Advocacy for NAR. This was a fun one because I'm a yeah. political junkie. You are. Uh, you should really tell them what we talked about. Well, you can you can do it. I'll, I'll, I'll add a little flavor to it. So, Perfect. so talked about what uh, he is concerned, or actually, what was interesting, not concerned with for 2020. Yeah, it was an interesting comment. Actually, yeah, yeah. yeah. Talked about uh, affordability a bit. We talked about first time home buyers. Some we talked about how they are approaching going into 2025 and the advocacy work that they're going to do how much work the team does yeah, that people don't realize the that team. and then yeah. the, the racial divide in ownership in this country too which is a was a good conversation to have and i i, I hope everybody tunes into this yeah. one yeah this is an important one and you need to put it in your ears kids on this one brian welcome to the podcast we are very excited to have you here Lots of stuff to talk about since uh, earlier this week, and there hasn't been any conversations on social media about it uh, no, at all. Not much. Um, so, Pretty look, slow year for you in general, right? I have time to look at yeah. it. Don't. It's a dumpster <laughs> fire. You're all right. Uh, I, I believed you for a second. <laughs> yeah. Um, look, we, uh, we know you're busy, and we're, we're excited to have this discussion with you. Um, you know, we talk a lot in, in the advocacy team about the stuff that you're working on leading up to elections and things. I would love to ask this question a little bit differently. So obviously the elections happened. Um, where does you, where do you go next? Like what happens now? The election's over. You had some candidates. I'm assuming that, you know, you were supporting some win, some lose, like I'm sure always. What's the next step? Where does the team focus on now in this right. board basis? Well, uh, believe it or not, a good part of that answer is we keep doing what we're doing. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, Insofar as analysts say that, uh, um, you know, that rent and housing costs contributed uh, to Trump's victory, uh, what's clear is that uh, home prices are not going down. Nope. And uh, I think what's key or what was key for many politicians was how effectively they leaned into it. Mm. Um, one of the things I think we can uh, take away from this last campaign and be proud of is that uh, housing was on the agenda. Yeah. You had, uh, you know, at the, in the presidential race, both mm -hmm. uh, candidates and their uh, running mates talking about housing, yeah. including in the debates. I think it may have been the first, quest first uh, question in the vice presidential debate. Right. Um, and, um, you know, candidates across uh, the country talking about it in, in their congressional races. So um, we know this is major concern, should be a major concern. Um, and I think NAR is going to continue to look at different ways to advocate. And, you know, regardless of the composition of Congress, <clears throat> that's going to be uh, our, our uh, focus, how we tailor that message, <clears throat> um, what tactics we use, you know, might change based on, let's say, where the house goes or, or right. whatever. But uh, we've got lots of data and uh, lots of ways to, to tack in order to persuade uh, officials in power that we need to tackle this. And tell us, just go a little deep on that for a second. What mm -hmm. does that look like? Because I think I think people don't understand the amount of work that goes on behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. um, certainly, people that are here, you know, at the at the convention are are very involved. Mm -hmm. But there's ten thousand people here. Yes. Yeah you know, almost 1.5 million people yeah, elsewhere yeah. that are not. And so like, give them a yeah, little bit. Well, of I mean, if, yeah, I mean, if people don't see what happens behind the scenes, right. you have cameras here, <laughs> people can see that I'm going gray. <laughs> and, and, and it's called real estate. Yeah, yeah. right, right. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I mean, uh, <laughs> Keith's bald. Yeah, I mean, he's, and, and very gray. He's, he's on the so, other, I mean, you're doing fine, don't worry. You know, yeah. We talk, we've been talking about these issues uh, you know, with the administration, the current administration, with the various agencies, uh, and on Capitol Hill, obviously we have a, an expansive lobbying team that's meeting with you know members individually, senators. Um, but I, I think the other thing in terms of you know behind the scenes, which is critically important right now, is we do a great deal of research, mm -hmm. and you know what we're seeing in the research indicates that America you know, can run but can't hide uh, from the housing affordability uh, yeah. problem. problem. Yeah. Yes. And just right now, for example, we just put out a study 
that shows that first time home buyers uh, purchases by first time home buyers this past year at a record low. Record yep. low. Right? Lowest ever, correct? Uh, lowest ever since yeah. we've been keeping since data. You, yeah. 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 Uh, and then also, um, we're finding that the average age of uh, first time home buyers is the highest ever. So, all so time high there. Two bad combos. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And right. then, <laughs> I don't want to depress everybody, yeah. <laughs> but um, all cash buyers. Um, in the market are at all time high too. Mm -hmm. So if you go back to the first time home buyers, you know, they're already competing with constrained supply. Uh, you hear people talking about institutional investors too, which in some, some markets is having great impact. Um, but then on top of it, just regular existing homeowners who have equity in their properties who are looking to upgrade or whatever, show up, pay cash. Right. And so <clears throat> figuring out the secret sauce of how do we help these first time home buyers mm -hmm. uh, is going to be critical. And the, the particular measures we take may be different under uh, Trump administration or a Republican Senate or, or House uh, than it would have been um, last week. Right. Let me right. do a follow up on that too, because mm -hmm. Keith knows I'm kind of a political junkie sometimes. That's but true. Do you, are, are we? It's on junkie. Yeah. <laughs> Well, he gets to be the nerd for data all the time. I yes, get to do the political he's, junk He's the political stuff. nerd, <laughs> not the data okay, nerd. Okay. Yeah. Are, are you um, concerned about, the, both candidates have not done a good job of explaining how they're going to deal with a deficit and debt in this country, which we're now at a trillion dollars of interest every year. They're going to have to be, they're, they're going to face this problem. And, and, and how they deal with it's going to be the big question. Yeah. Everyone's going to be dealing with cuts somewhere. What, what do we do? How do we make sure that the, you know, Real estate's a very significant part of our GDP. Yeah. How, right. how, do you, how do we make sure that this is not the area where these yeah. cuts happen? Cuts happen. Yeah. Is swearing allowed? Yeah. Uh, All right. Well, I mean, reality. Maybe. Is... <laughs> <laughs> All right. No, I'll, I'll, no I'll, swearing. I'll take it back. Reality is a B. Yeah. Uh, and, and just to say that, like, you know, reality is going to come crashing down. Right. Right. And, uh, you know, we mentioned interest rates, you know. There are a lot of things we may want to do in terms of tax relief, mm. but that could also um, hang the mortgage rates right. high sure. long right. term, right? right. Yeah. And you know, uh, the reality too is we have, you know, whole generation. I mean, I was talking about the age of first-time home buyers right. who may not see that prospect, and who are, you know, some of some of those folks facing uh, retirement or at least delaying yeah. <clears throat> what they can save for retirement because they don't have this major investment. You know, 40 times, uh, homeowners have 40 times the wealth. That, yeah, it's yeah, the right. single largest right. wealth generator right. in, for in, most yeah. people. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, I always think of the John Oliver saying uh, that you know, when he did a home, uh, program on uh, home ownership, he said, oh, and by the way, you know, uh, anyone under 35, this show's not for you because you will never effing own a home. Right. Yeah. You know, <laughs> um, and so, but the, you know, it's a joke, but it is, shown borne out in the data right and so um we can't avoid that we right. you know and if we want social stability in the country mm -hmm. we have to address it and because it's also cutting racially mm -hmm. yeah you know and we know from our demographics that net the majority of net new home buyers are people of color mm -hmm. right and existing homeowners many of whom uh, for a variety of reasons, uh, aren't prepared or incentivized to sell, right. uh, are holding on to properties, which they very well may bequeath to uh, their children. Mm -hmm. Right. And that further... It exactly, doesn't enter back into yeah, the Yeah, it further exacerbates right. yeah. The, yeah. the inequality. So all of those things we have to tackle in one way or another, reality is going to confront us. I'm going to come back to that because yeah. I, I want to actually ask you what policies we should be looking at to address some of this stuff. But mm -hmm. I know Keith has a question he's been wanting to ask about sort of I concerns. Do. Yeah. So I, I have one uh, other question first, because while I do agree that uh, during this last election cycle, at least housing was mentioned but no one really had yeah, there wasn't a, really plan, a plan, right? No, it was mentioned, but not deeply discussed. Um, I mean, there were some policies, but it wasn't there were some, yeah, there was some, but yeah. it wasn't really. Yeah, bad. I guess I, not enough, in my opinion. And this is just me right. expressive use of Keith, yeah. Williams, right? But like, when does it become something that's mentioned to something that's actionable and and there's a plan for it, like uh, a, a real a plan question. of significance? Yeah. Well, w once you're in office, right? right? I mean. Right. Uh, you can run on various platforms, and I think it's important to make, you know, uh, 
bold statements mm -hmm. of your vision. Sure. But obviously, you know, how that looks in legislation uh, is likely to be different. Actually, right. that's where the details are going, are going to be hashed well, out. And, if, and it's, it's going to be important depending upon whether, you know, President Trump has control, the Republican Party has control of the Senate and yeah. the House as yeah. well yeah. to get those things passed. Right. right. You're going to have infighting yeah. like normal. So, yeah. 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 So, you know, to yeah. some extent, concepts of a plan are helpful. <laughs> yeah. But, but, <laughs> right. but, you know, yeah. it's likely that you're going to detail those plans later. Mm. Um, even better if your concept is a sound concept. Right. <laughs> that's helpful. Yeah. <laughs> and, and that people are voting for something that's going to, to, to actually, uh, you know, help us all. Right. And so, um, but what's, you know, what's helpful is that <clears throat> that a lot of that work is already happening. Mm. Right. Um, we as, at NAR have supported a number of bipartisan measures um, that are going to help in terms of inventory. And when I say inventory, I'm not talking about housing production necessarily, but that issue of uh, circulation. Give us an example yeah. of one of those. So the More Homes on the Market Act, like okay. one of the reasons why a lot of people who have great equity in their homes, many who maybe, you know, over 40 years, I was, I was hanging out with some friends in Boston who've actually seen their, their property values uh, increase like 20 times in Since 30 been, years. Yeah. 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 Uh, and, but if, if you're going to sell that, there's a tax event. The, well, it's a tax event and, and the cap, the amount of capital gains you can exclude right. mm -hmm. hasn't changed since 1997 or something. Like right. That, right. Right. And so, but values certainly and have. value, value certainly have. Yeah. And so with inflation, <clears throat> that, that absolute dollar figure would have doubled mm -hmm. if, if the capital gains exclusion had actually been set to increase with inflation. So by proposing to double that, that may encourage some of the existing homeowners to put more stuff on them. To get it back stuff. into the right. market. Now that does not add to the overall number of units. Right. Number of units that are not just going to suddenly materialize. Mm. So we have to have strategies there. Um, the Neighborhood Homes Investment Act is helpful, especially in distressed areas that it can produce some units and actually rehabilitate some units that are going obsolescent. Um, but then you also have some of these measures like uh, the main, the Downtown and Main Streets Act, which is supposed to provide tax incentives to convert commercial to residential property. Yeah. But honestly, we need to do all those things, but it's not enough. Right. right. All We're, that and more. We, yeah. We yeah. have a 5.5 million unit shortage, mm -hmm. which, you know, accumulated over 15 to 20 years. So we really need some bold action. I, I describe it as a Marshall Plan mm. to build in this country. And we had a forum here yesterday where we focused on some of that, and folks said we need to be thinking about how do we build mass scale. Right. You know, what do we do in terms of like modular and others, and and, and how do we don't how do we make sure we don't undermine ourselves? The whole tariff discussion is like yeah, it's a big thing. Exactly right. Have we an don't impact want, on material. You know what? I just uh, from yeah. all from everything you just covered is I had this sort of epiphany that. There are so many people who do not understand or appreciate how much work is going on that is happening to make sure that that all of this functions in this country. Yes. All of those things, I wasn't aware of some of those as well, and I right. wish I was. Right. Um, and we have to we have to continue to work on getting that information out because without that arm, this advocacy team doing that, this whole thing will be looks here, very be, yeah. different. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I want to keep this moving just because of yeah. time. So yeah, yeah, we sure. got two more questions yeah. for you. Yeah. So uh Let's talk about what's you know happening on Capitol Hill 2025. Mm -hmm. What are you concerned about coming out of Capitol Hill for 2025? Well, um, I wouldn't call it a concern, but what I know we will. That's be, good news. I'll yeah, that. yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I mean, uh, in the housing, <laughs> <your> housing. <laughs> <laughs> um, fair. What 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 I'll say is that uh, what we are concerned with that what we want to you know what we want to make sure we do um, is see that um, the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act provisions that are set to expire mm. um, are extended, the ones that will um, be beneficial to sure. homeowners and to the real estate industry. Um, so I think that's key. Mm. And, you know, uh, I was on this advocacy scoop we had here the other day, and my uh, director of uh, federal taxation policy was uh, talking about this too. You know, <clears throat> the composition of the House um, can sort of cut both ways that, you know, there are many pro-business benefits if there's a Republican House, um, but then uh, many Democrats have strongly supported measures that would boost supply that we right. desperately need. Mm -hmm. And so there's the possibility, if there's a, a Democratic House, 
for some compromise around some measures that would do a bit of both. Um, but supply is absolutely essential. And so I guess if you ask what I'm concerned about, I'm concerned that we don't have enough Republicans leading on the supply. Um, but I think there's great potential. And as I said, reality is, is confronting us. Um, and fortunately, we have very good relationships with uh, the folks who may be the chairs of the relevant committees for us. The influence. You mentioned yeah. that a little bit earlier in, yeah. in the show. We'll wrap up with this because this is a this is something that is it's an incredible problem. So the racial homeownership gap is larger than ever in this country. Um, what do we do? What, what would you suggest we're, we should be doing to reverse this trend? <clears throat> well, there are certain things that we must do to try to keep it from getting worse. Worse. So mm. housing supply, for example, you know, because the lack of housing supply is creating the affordability challenge in the right. country. And those who have more, as I've said, you know, are the, the ones who are most likely to benefit. And it's actually going to be those who have more uh, are going to have even greater advantages and right. those who have less are going to have even greater disadvantages. And that cuts racially in this country yeah. because of our, our history of excluding people from home ownership um, for decades and centuries. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, I think we're going to have to confront <clears throat> the fact that if we aren't willing to do anything reparative in this country, um, we may not see those measures, th those gaps close. Um, under the Biden administration, there were some efforts to do certain things like special purpose credit programs and others, um, and to try to tailor them in such a way that they address some of the past discrimination. Um, I don't think that's something the Trump administration is likely to do. Mm. But I think, again, data is going to show that if we don't do something along those lines, right. we may see them exacerbate. And it, it can lead to some significant problems in this country, especially if the net new um, if the majority of the net new homeowners are people of color. Mm. So we're gonna have to figure out certain ways to do it. We just passed a shared equity model policy that we wanna uh, support those kinds of programs that are, are um, through shared equity going to help people with down payment assistance and closing costs. We know some states are doing things to redress past discrimination and many of those states uh, like uh, Washington State, realtors supported those measures. So some other states are looking at those things. So some of the states may do some things uh, yeah. in this area, but uh, we have to confront it and be honest about it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Brian, I just wanted to, as we close out, just thank you for all the work that you do. Yeah. You know, you, Shannon, the whole the whole team. We do appreciate it. And sometimes it doesn't feel like you get the appreciation the you from the, the membership yeah. Is, yeah. Is, yeah. as you deserve. I'll give you but, my Venmo and you can shout. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'll, I'll, I'll take you up. I'll buy you a cocktail. Um, all right. Uh, but just genuinely, thanks for everything. We appreciate you stopping by and keep up Thank the you. amazing work that you're doing. Thanks yes, for having for the me. work. Awesome. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Thanks. All right. Thank you for joining us at the NAR Next Conference in Boston, Massachusetts. We have been doing the Drive with NAR podcast in association with Real Estate Insiders Unfiltered. We want to thank everybody for tuning in. We appreciate all of that. Make sure you subscribe to both podcasts. We got a lot of content coming.